Hello everybody and welcome to an action-packed episode of Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. Before I get into Napa Valley, which is today's theme, I just want to thank everybody who's ordered the special six-pack that we sent out today on email. We are selling a six-pack of wine that you can taste along with me next week. Starting next Thursday, I believe, I'm pretty sure, I will be tasting and going an in-depth look on each of the wines that I sent out on today's six-pack. So, a lot of people have been requesting, I'd love to taste along with you, how can I know about the wines that you're going to be featuring on Wine Library TV? Well, we did that today. We sent it out on our email site. I'll have a link below this video if anybody else is not on the email service and like to participate in our very interesting experiment. So once again, starting next week, next Thursday, I will be tasting wines that are available right now for sale, part of a special Wine Library TV six pack. And we'll be doing that three or four times a year. We did very well with the sales today. So thank you. And thank you again for all the emails and the comments. They're just pouring in. We're getting picked up by bloggers all over the country and the world, Germany, Italy, France. It's humbling, exciting, and, and I appreciate it very much. I think when you bring value and you bring it from your heart, you get it back in spades, and that's what I think is happening with us, and I appreciate that. So, Napa Valley. The reason I've decided to taste four Napa Valley Cabernets today is that we refer to Napa Valley a lot. I say the, that Barossa is the Napa of California, or I've said, you know, this, this is the Napa of Portugal. Always referring to Napa. Why am I doing that? Napa Valley is widely considered the premium place in the world, let alone California, to grow and make Cabernet. Cabernet being by far America's most passionate and favorite red wine grape, so obviously there's, a, there's that natural synergy. So today I've got four fantastic California Cabernets, all have been fantastic in the past, we'll see how they show, and we're going to taste through them. Robert Mondavi, 2003, Napa Cabernet. Robert Mondavi, we've talked about him on our show before, I mean this is, the, you know, one of the pioneers of the wine industry, the father of Napa. I wasn't planning on doing this wine, but how could I do a Napa episode without Mondavi? Again, we've talked about the canting and your own personal palate. Once again, my palate built on young tannin structured wines my whole career. These wines have been open for about four hours, but again, not decanted, just a little breathing. I'm able to cut through the acidity and tannins. Many of you are as well, because everybody in America drinks wine way too young. But um, that's why we're doing that. Outrageous color. I mean, really, probably the darkest Mondavi cab I ever remember, at least for the regular Napa. Great nose. A little bit of mint eucalyptus on the nose. Kind of interesting. Well structured, nice balance, good fruit, nice acidity, a little bit of a hollow finish. I also get like a wet oak kind of flavor on this that's disturbing me a little bit. Not bad, not bad. Solid wine, I would probably score that an 87. Nothing crazy. <laughs> 2003, Norton Ridge, Napa Cabernet. The reason I kind of snickered is I didn't really pick the wines today. I'm having the staff kind of pick out, so it's kind of a little bit more surprising to me, and I feel like I'll even give a more natural reaction to the wine, no preconceived. Again, we will do some blind tastings, people have been asking. Big nose. But a closed nose, uh, it's coming through, uh, powerful fruit, but it's coming through very slowly. Silky fruit, I like that. Nice cherry, black cherry. Nice long finish. This is an excellent wine. I'm very impressed. I've been really impressed with the Norton Ridge wines in general. So if you haven't had any, seek them out. They, they make a great Pinot Noir. They're very good. Stag's Leap Artemis, 2003. Pitch black color again. Really deep color. I mean, these Napa caps get so much color.
so good. The uh, stag sleep comes off very thin. Very thin. Like a Hollywood scarlet, you know? Just too thin for a Cabernet. The flavors are really kind of drowned in oak and uh, I don't know. This just doesn't do it for me. Again, I'm sure a name a lot of people recognize, but just not so great. Coletto, 2001, Napa Cab. Now, in 2001, Napa had one of its great growing seasons. Considered widely as one of the big three, 94, 97, 2001. I personally am a huge fan of 95 in Napa as well. I actually find it better than all of the above, but they've all been scored very high, and 01 is a classic vintage. This has tremendous color as well. By far, the most vibrant nose. You can see there's a little bit more of a of a, a rounded brown color on the outside of this one, which is interesting. This has a very exotic nose. Interesting. I get a great tar, a little bit of um, round, robust cherries, strawberries, black fruit, the most fruit by far, but very complete and complex as well. This is a massive wine. This is excellent. Wow, I'm really impressed with this. Coletto State, small producer. Napa Valley is a place where when you go, you realize you're in the wine world. You know, there's a lot of marketing in Napa at this point. It's not really, you know, the hills anymore. But that should not overshadow the fact that they make world-class wines. As I rate these, and this is as easy as it's been for me. Coletto killed the competition. The Norton Ridge Cab was fantastic, closely followed by Mondavi. The Stag's Leap just didn't cut it for me. It was just, I don't know, just an average effort at best, and a pretty expensive wine considering. Napa should not be overlooked. Seek it out. Visit Napa. Thanks for everything. Thanks for the comments. Keep them coming. Keep the emails coming. We'll see you next time on Wine Library TV.